practically it's all of this uh, variety of supporters, customers, others of course hates us. I mean, that's in the business. There's different attitude, a different approach. See, uh, when uh, the editor makes errors, he has to redo things. That is what just happened right now. So I'm still Morten, I'm still from uh, Online Print Symposium here in Munich. And I just tried to say that we were a really international event, because we are. there's a lot of Germans here, there's a lot of people from uh, all over uh, Europe. And now we're going to talk a little bit to Trond Eric and to Mark, who is uh, working for Livonia in Latvia. But Trond Eric, he is from Norway and Mark is from Germany, so it is truly international. Before we talk a little bit about the technical stuff, Tron Eric, can you uh, please tell us what is Livonia? Livonia is a dedicated book printer in uh, Riga, Latvia. Working in markets like Germany, Scandinavia. And I guess that most people understand what a dedicated book printer is, but can we get a little bit more details? What is there any kind of books that you are not doing or are you both digital and analog? Well, tell us a little, about, a little bit about what you're doing. Oh, it's books. We usually say we make three things. Books, books and books. And that can be any kind of books, but preferably cell stitch, perfect bound, soft cover, hard cover, but a book. Um, when you are in the book market, I think that some people, uh, maybe not so many people in the printing industry more, because I think that the niches of the book print is actually proven that now it seems that the ones that have focused on books, they can actually make a business out of it. But I think from a general perspective, I think a lot of people are thinking of the book as a dying product. How do you see that? I have only one thing to say to them, and that's to go to the book fair in Frankfurt, which is the biggest fair in the world. And there's a lot of books, I guess. There's a lot of books. Yeah. And I guess that you print a uh, quite considerably portion of those. 50 million of those books. So that's why you are almost smiling. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, when we talk about uh, the, the market for books and the way that you have dedicated to, to enter into this market, uh, I totally understand that by focusing, I guess that is one of your key uh, elements for success. And Mark, uh, the last time uh, I met you, that was in Graphcom in Sweden, where you were actually giving a presentation that was really exciting about how much automation uh, is playing a role in Livonia. Can you just briefly talk about what uh, what kind of uh, work you have been doing or what you're doing? Yeah, <clears throat> also the, the main work is to buying the machine is just an investment to find these automated machines. The, the vendors like Heidelberg or Müller, they are building these machines. The, the main focus is really the workflow and software part behind it, the process changing, um, learning teaching algorithms to make those plannings, um, learning to choose the right papers, the right folding schemas and those things. And that's what we are focused on right now and um, we are nearly there, which was uh, presenting in Graphcom. Um, but it's not so easy. So that's also what I needed to learn because I was very optimistic in the starting phase to make something like that within one year. Yeah? And this is unfortunately not so possible. Mm. And I, I think that one of the things I like about both these types of events and Graphcom is, and, and it may be especially about you two guys, is that you're very open about talking about both the challenges and also how you see the market in the future. Is, is that uh, because the secret is not in the technology itself? Anyone more or less is welcome to the owner print because what they see... You said almost. Yeah, there are exceptions, <laughs> but almost anyone. And uh, what they see, anyone can buy if you have the money. But of course the secret is what is behind. So, and I guess that's one of the things I, I just heard that, that you spoke about, or there was a question to, to Bernd, I think it was actually, what is the success? And I think it, the answer is like humans, right? Uh, because that is the main differentiator between as you said, uh, Trond, uh, everything, everybody can buy the equipment and it's more about the mindset of how to do that. And, and how do you do that? Because you also said just a second ago that you were only two people working on this, this project aligned with some uh, vendors, of course, right? But how, how do you get that work? I mean, you have to get the ideas. I'm in a very lucky position that I have an owner of a company which has a lot of trust and give me, give me a green field and just do it. And if you are allowed in a company to think outside the box and you are not limited to any restrictions and directions, you are, you are a free spirit. And with a free spirit, you find exactly those solutions and then you don't need so much people. Mm. You also mentioned that you're working with uh, Crispy Mountains and, and that you were kind of a first mover on, on uh, maybe on the book market and, and in that scale, because uh, for people that don't know, Livonia has turned into be a quite big printing company, right? Uh, before we talk about that, uh, Trond Eric, can you tell me a little bit, because you have both Offset and uh, Digital, what kind of equipment uh, uh, do we find in Livonia? Offset is uh, Heidelberg, 
uh, digital is uh, Canon. And, and uh, to make a choice about technology, because you just said that maybe it's more the mindset than it's the technology itself. Is it just by, I was just in quotation about pure accident that it's Heidelberg and Canon, or is it because of the relationship you have? Or how, how did that come across? Well, I think our philosophy has always been that there's, whether it's binding, printing, officer printing, digital or whatever, but anyone can make a box fairly good. But it's a question about the support and the partnership you get when you start to use it. And that's maybe more important, at least as important as the machine itself. Because we have over the years been talking to a lot of printing companies, and it's 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 funny because it's always Heidelberg is always almost always mentioned as a very important partner. Also, HP is considered a very important partner, and Canon is also mentioned as important. But to get that right equipment and to find that partnership, does that require a lot of thinking about what you want to do eventually, or is it something that comes from a relationship that you had in advance? As I said, relationship is there the point and uh, the point is also when we started with Canon that was a starting phase because book production is different. We are working on offset coded medias, we have offset materials and we can't accept any digital medias in that, in that regards. So it was for both a learning curve but with a right partner like in a marriage you go through that path and we work together and find the right solutions and with Canon we found them. Mm. You are now here at, uh, as we spoke about here at the Online Print Symposium, uh, is it only because you can, can you also learn from here or is it only to give away your knowledge? I'm convinced you can learn. I mean, this is very modern people in, in the way of thinking and doing business. We come from more like conservative part of the business, trying to be modern, and we will be modern. <laughs> when you say conservative, is the Norwegian or the bookmark you're talking about? Uh, the book producers uh, in general. Okay, you're nodding, so you were just about, you were, you were just, you were wondering what his answer would be, right? <laughs> and you said, uh, I think you smiled when you said that on stage, that you wish you were able to do uh, Livonia in Norway, but it was because of the, the ex ex expensive salary rates. In, but is that, was that more from a starting point? Would you be able to do with, if you have like a fully automated uh, workflow today, would you be able to do book print and commodity print uh, also in high labor cost countries, you think? I think the biggest problem is that you have to find people and then you can negotiate a salary. But uh, even in Latvia it's hard to find young people willing to <clears throat> put their education and everything into graphic business because the reputation in, in the whole market is very bad. Books are dead, if not, but that's what people think. Yeah. And I think that is actually, I know also from Intergraph that they have put in projects about making uh, print a little bit more sexy to actually s uh, secure that we get young people into the industry, right? But are you also taking responsibility, do you educate people yourself in, in your company? Uh, yeah, for sure. And, and for us it's really important and I think our industry is sexy. I think that's, that's it's the wrong perspective. We are the only industry where there is no lobbyism. We can make every decision we would like to have. If you want to make a digitized world, we can do that. So, um, and that's something what we I think we need to learn to bring it also to the younger people that if you want to be free and you want to do what you think is the right way then our industry is the right direction because there is no 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 lobbyists who have no politics who are pushing into that so I think we are in a sexy industry. Uh, final question I was just curious because if you heard the keynote from Bernd Zipper as well he's talking about the product of one and I think that a lot of people have been talking about uh, the print of one also when it comes to books are we there yet? Theoretically, we can be. The problem is that I cannot uh, produce for the price any publisher is willing to pay. And nobody is willing to pay for the price I can produce. So it's kind of a black hole. So the product of one is not because of technical uh, 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 challenges, it's more because of the actual cost of setting up the machine, regardless of how smart it is to get it. But do you think, Mark, do you think that is, uh, that's where it will go eventually? Also, maybe. Therefore also the publishing business needs to change in certain ways. I mean, for a product of one, a publisher needs to charge double, triple or four times the price. Therefore he needs to find a way um, to customize. So that means, let's take Harry Potter as an example. To, to make you willing to buy this book, you want to have your name as the main character. So for the publisher, it's like a mission impossible to go to the author and ask, can I change your names? Because he was thinking something. So I think at the moment, there is not a business case in the publishing industry where I can see this model one. Educational is a different topic, yeah? but in, in, in that level where we are working with the normal publishers, um, I don't see it right now. And we start step by step. Yeah. But I think that uh, one of the things that we see as a trend when we talk, I, I visited a, a huge big uh, 
huge uh, book printer in New Jersey uh, half a year ago. Um, and what they were doing was like they were uh, digging directly into the publishing system. So when they order books, it was maybe not an order of one, but it could be maybe 100 jobs of 10 right. or five right. or something. This is, this is a different topic. This is what is possible. Yeah. Sure. And that is something you do as well? Um, First you start to walk and then you start to run. From, from, the, from the workflow side and from that how we are lining all everything together, exactly that is possible. It, this is not a critical part. So, so you will foresee a future that, that you can actually dig in directly into the order systems of the publishing companies and get data out and be sure that you have current and up to date and, and minimum stock uh, requires them still at competitive prices? For sure, for sure, exactly that's the target. So, um, Trond Eric, when, when you got into uh, Livonia, uh, were you like a conventional printer in Norway before you started this or how, how is your history? My education, bookbinder and, and printer. So uh, I guess that has been quite a journey for you, hasn't it? It's been a nice and tough one. <laughs> Ups and downs. <laughs> and how, uh, I, I'm just curious here, yeah, it's a final question, I'm just curious because uh, uh, I think that uh, especially Scandinavian countries to some extent is a little bit protective about uh, having, you know, made in Norway or made in Denmark or something like that. How uh, has uh, Livonia been perceived by the Norwegian printing industry? Is that like the big bad wolf or is it uh, now a partner that works together or how, 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 how are you the evil person of Norway or? <laughs> I, I don't think so, but I think you will. F I don't think so either. I, don't, I think we'll find the people which practically is all over this variety of supporters, customers. Others, of course, hates us. I mean, that's in the business. There's different attitude, a different approach.